Hello everyone, welcome to vlog at least half of the days in April. This video would have been more pertinent to do yesterday, but I wasn't feeling well, so I didn't. But I want to now, so I'm gonna. Yesterday was April 23rd, and there were a great many people across the world celebrating the 450th anniversary of the birth of William Shakespeare. So the reason that I bring this up is because we don't actually know that it was Shakespeare's birthday. There is no surviving documentation of Shakespeare's true date of birth. What we do have is a really educated guess. We do have documentation that he was baptized April 26th, 1564. And from there, it's just a guess. It's a good guess, but it's a guess nonetheless. So anyway, that is what my justification is for posting this on what is largely considered to be the day after Shakespeare's birthday. Whatever. So to celebrate Shakespeare's birthday-ish, we're going to go over a few of Shakespeare's most misquoted and misunderstood lines. Lead on, Macduff. The actual quote is, lay on, Macduff, and damned be him who first cries, hold, enough. This misquote suggests that Macbeth wants Macduff to maybe sort of head to the front lines and start fighting a little bit. The actual quote is a touch more emphatic. Macbeth would like Macduff to be fighting right now. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. This one is also from Macbeth and the actual quote is double, double, toil and trouble. Fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. This misquote was actually popularized by the DuckTales episode, Much Ado About Scrooge. Yep. In one fell swoop. This last one from Macbeth is more of a misunderstanding than a misquote. Macduff, in talking about the murder of his family, uses the phrase, at one fell swoop, likening the perpetrator of the crime to a raptor. Not that kind, the bird of prey kind. This quote uses the archaic term fell, meaning fierce, when now modern day usage has made it kind of casual and almost comical. Neither rhyme nor reason. Another misunderstood line, this time from the Comedy of Errors. Us modern folk typically focus on the reason part of the phrase, when it's actually supposed to express a lack of sense and eloquence, as in to not have rhyme. What the Dickens? This one is interesting because most people assume that it's a reference to the Victorian era writer Charles Dickens. Dickens is actually a Elizabethan euphemism for the devil, which might have been unfortunate for Charles Dickens' great-great-grandparents. <laughs> the world's mine oyster. Modern usage typically expresses that the world can be taken at its fullest, as with the cracking open of an oyster shell to reveal the delicious goodness within. The actual quote is, The world's mine oyster, which I with sword shall open. Which, while I suppose has a similar meaning, this one's a little more stabby than how we use it today. Now is the winter of our discontent. Like the last one, this is another quote that's more of a misappropriation. The full quote is, Now is the winter of our discontent made glorious summer by the son of York. Without the second line, it sounds like right now everything's cold and we're all grumpy, but in fact, it's actually the opposite. Now it's summer and it's glorious. All right, this has already gone on for a while, so I'm gonna cut it short, but I need to talk about Hamlet and that one line from Romeo and Juliet. Methinks the lady doth protest too much is switched around. The actual line is the lady doth protest too much, methinks. While it does have the same meaning, it's still wrong. The rest is science. Hamlet's final words are actually, the rest is silence. I have no idea where the science part comes in. The word science is spoken precisely zero times in Hamlet. One final Hamlet quote, Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him well. The actual quote is, Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. While, once again, this one doesn't actually change the meaning, it's still equally wrong. And now for what I would estimate to be the most misunderstood line in all of Shakespeare. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? The problem with this one isn't that it's misquoted. The problem is that most people think that the word wherefore means where, as in, hey Romeo, where ya at? But what it actually means is why. Why are you Romeo, a Montague, and an enemy of my family? So that was fun. Hopefully you learned something, or at least made it to the end of this video. Oh, before I forget, I call this my Hamlet shirt. Not only because it portrays a scene from the play, but because it has the whole show on it. Every single line. It's from a company called Lithographs. They aren't a sponsor, I just think they're really cool. Check them out, link in the doobly-doo. All right, I'll see you all tomorrow, probably. Hey guys, this Sunday is actually my birthday, the 27th. So I'm gonna be doing a little Google Plus Hangout and it would be swell if you were to join me. 2 p.m. Central Time is the time that I made up just now.